As a Muslim, my greatest hope for the Muslim community is to be able to apply the faith in improving the lives of not only the Bangsamoro, not only the Balik Islams, but the whole Filipino nation as well. I'm Dr. Nahida Dimasisil Mustafa. I am an internist and I subspecialized in clinical nutrition. I am the current head physician of the Islamic Studies School and Guidance Philippine School Clinic. My dad was uh, born Maguindanon. He's a Muslim. My mom was Batangen. Yeah. Didn't know anything about Islam. So she studied it and found out that there are so many similarities. That Virgin Mary is also there. Jesus is also there. Eventually, she embraced it. So my mom decided to become Muslim also later on. When my parents went to the Middle East, mga OFW, my mom was a nurse, my dad was a med tech. Doon ako nagkataong pinanganak nung nagbubuntis yung mom ko during the first year of her year in Jeddah. We stayed there for almost 10 years. And then when we went back, bumalik kami ng Pilipinas, major shift ng environment. So from an Islamic country to a Catholic country in the Philippines. Kasi we were taken by my mom back to her home province sa Batangas. After transferring back to Philippines, nagkaroon kami ng mga adjustments. Wala naman masyadong mga simbahang Muslim. So my parents decided to set up a masjid sa likod ng bahay namin. So yung current Balayan Masjid sa Balayan Batangas ay nasa likod ng bahay namin. Kahit hindi kami Islamic yung community, we were looking for ways how we can practice more Islam. Until college, doon ko na-appreciate, na-realize na I think it's about time that I wear my hijab. You want to learn more about your faith and you want to know why do Muslims have to wear hijab? And then when I studied the purpose of wearing the hijab, it's ordained in the Quran, prescribed in the Quran to protect us, to protect the women. Na-reset yung spiritual aspect ng life. Yung dad ko, he was a religious guy. My dad was a videographer also when we were younger, but not the professional videographer. He used to practice and videotape some meetings, meetings about what's happening in Mindanao, meetings about Muslims in the Philippines. He developed this skill of appreciating what's going on in Mindanao, kahit nasa Jeddah pa kami, maliliit pa kami. So at that time, syempre maliit pa ako, hindi ko masyado na-appreciate yung concept. I just see his files. And then when I grew up, I realized na this is what I was looking for. I have to look back sa roots natin sa Mindanao. I think every Filipino should look back. For all we know, we might be all interconnected in so many ways. As I grew up, although my dad wasn't strict about telling me to be active in the Young Moral Professionals Network, I found myself craving to see my Muslim sisters and brothers. We realized that we have to come together to help in Mindanao because there's always a war. And we don't want that same war-torn area in our generation. Namin. For the Young Water Professionals Network, we just had to come together and decide na ano pang pwede namin gawin. If there's something going on down there, how can we help? So, na-realize namin na maybe it's about time that we educate more youth. And some of the members of the group became grouped into lawyers. And then in Iman, the Islamic Medical Association was formed as a group of Muslim doctors also. As part of the Islamic Medical Association, our main goal is to make a good networking group wherein if we have referrals, o oh, nasan yung neurosurgeon dito, sino ba ang cardiologist dito sa Tawi-Tawi. Kung may mga pasyente kami na deprived sa area na yon, we can ask them to go to this doctor and then ma-address agad yung mga concerns nila. It's just mainly volunteerism. We have to come together and help each other. When I was in medical school, I had the opportunity to join medical missions. As a medical student that time, I was so sad during the picket war. Every time I see war, I really, really hate it. You get to volunteer, you get to see people going to the evacuation centers. So inhumane. Filipinos don't deserve to have war. <laughs> Wherever we are, whether you're in Mindanao, whether you're in Cavite, whether you're in Manila, no one deserves war. No Filipino would want to see their houses burn, 
no Filipino would want to see their parents die. You would see your children scattered on the, on the floor, lifeless. No one would want that. As a physician, nag-aral ka, nagme-medicina ka, nagagamot ka ng pasyente. Tapos makikita mo, pinapasabugan lang yung mga tao. I did not even grow up in Cotabato. I am not a Maranao. But when I experienced war as a medical doctor, I was really depressed. And I really promised myself na I would never ever want to see war again. I mean, if you come to think of it, saan kaya hinuhugot yung strength, no? Saan kaya nila hinuhugot yung lakas ng loob nila para mabuhay sa ganong situation? Ako, pupunta lang ako just for a medical mission. Hanggang doon lang yung magagawa ko. But can I stop the war? Can we stop the war? Hindi. So, masaklap. Kasi nag-aral ka ng napakatagahan para maging doktor just to see people die so easily. Nagpunta kami ng Marawi that time, we were able to do medical missions for medical teams with the DOH also. Nakapunta kami sa iba't ibang evacuation centers and nakita namin yung ibang evacuation centers na nasa hill, kung babagyo, baka mag-landslide, na nasa delikadong lugar din. May mga bata na gustong-gusto mong dalhin sa syudad para ipagamot pero hindi mo magawa agad-agad sa dami nila. Na bigyan kami ng pagkakataon na makita yung mga nangyari sa mga debris. At hindi ito talaga. Hindi siguro magiging enough yung description ko to describe how horrid it is. I don't think Muslims would ever want their own city destructed. Until now, syempre nag-hope lang kami. No? I hope na people will have better lives after all the wars. What if it happens in other areas sa Philippines, no? not just in Marawi? Will they also be as strong as them? Will they be able to thrive and simply migrate to other cities na ganun na lang and, and rebuild again? Hanga po kami actually. Hanga kami sa strength nila. We had the medical mission, dental mission, all together with medical consultations, visitation of the evacuation center, feeding programs. It took a lot of united effort. So, hindi lang siya iman. It was together with the local government unit and the DOH physicians who were assigned there. It's more of the concept of bayanihan in the Iman. Now, in ISCAG, in Islamic Studies Call and Guidance, I was employed here as the head physician for the clinic. Ang ISCAG po ay NGO. Ito ay NGO na nagtayo ng school. Way back 1990s, nagkaroon sila ng group of Muslims. Majority are Balik Islams or yung mga converts. So, most of them worked in the Middle East. Nag-aral ng Islam, nagkaroon ng knowledge about Islam. They appreciated the faith. They wanted to practice it upon going home to the Philippines. So they were able to build their own community here. So currently, there are 100 families. And we have over 300 students who are studying in ISCAG school. Dito, maraming pasyente na nakikita kong nanggagaling din from Marawi. Fortunate enough, nakakapagservisyo tayo sa mga evacuees na galing doon. This clinic so far also caters to 80% non-Muslims. It's very open. Hindi lang ho siya exclusive na pang-Muslim lang. Hindi, kasi bawal sa amin yun. We cannot be exclusive in treating people. We have to treat everyone kung ano yung karamdaman, focus ka sa karamdaman. We don't choose their patient by religion, by whatever financial status they're in. Here in ISCAG, I'm primarily doing my best to serve also, apply what we have done many years back, countless medical missions. Kaya whenever I look back, it hurts me no, to see war happening again. Kaano man katinde yung balakit sa peace and order na nandun, there's always a better way of making peace, of improving a community. I always believe there's always a better way of reshaping a city, transforming a city into a progressive city. There's always a better way. War will never be, for me, a good means of transforming a city. 
for the Bangso Moro Organic no, napakarami na po nang nagpakahirap para maisakatuparan yung batas na ito. Hindi ho biro yung maglabi ng isang batas, pag-aralan, i-ratify, i-edit, kung ano man yung laman ng isang batas for so many years. So para sa akin, napakalaking kasalanan kapag hindi natin inayudahan yung batas na ang hangarin naman ay kapayapaan. Not only in Mindanao, not only about peace, but also financial progress. Parang binubuksan niya yung pintuan for a bigger progress for the whole country, not just for the Bangsamora region. And me, even if I don't live there, physically all the time and I didn't grow up there all my life. I agree with it. I agree with the Bangsamoro cause because it's, I think, a cause that every Filipino should study. That every Filipino should feel that they are also Bangsamoro. That we are all one. It's for the whole Philippines. It's for the progress of the whole country. Now that I see how things are going, they have removed the terrorist tag sa MILF, they have appreciated the efforts of the MILF, for example, they know that they can work hand in hand together to promote peace, to promote progress, and eventually rebuild the lives of the affected people. Sana yung mga hindi naman mag-agree ay huwag namang gumawa ng kaguluhan. Kung matuloy man sila, respect the vote of the majority. Kung matuloy man ito, yung plebisito, may isa katuparan yung barn, then it's for the better. It's for the betterment of the families. Dahil marami din naman tayong Bangsamoro members who are already migrating elsewhere in the Philippines. So for me, everyone's Bangsamoro. I think if we give the chance to the barn and see how it grows with all the minerals and all the natural resources na nandun, to give them a hand on how to manage the natural resources that have been there for so long, na naghihintay lang ng mahusay na leader na mag-handle nito. If we give them a chance and see how the growth will be immense, then why don't we support the Mindanaoans, the, the Bangsamoro organic law, because the growth of the Mindanao region, the Bangsamoro region, is the growth of the whole nation. My name is Dr. Jamil R. I am the current college secretary of the Institute of Islamic Studies, University of the Philippines. I came from a family of teachers and I also teach. I started teaching here in the Institute of Islamic Studies in 2014 when I completed my PhD at the International Islamic University of Malaysia and I went back uh, here. So I started teaching as an assistant professor. I was born actually in Marawi City, in fact in the ground zero in Marinaut, Marawi City, part of the most affected areas in Marawi City. Well, the life in the province of Lanao del Sur or in Marawi City was not easy for me or for my family. I came from a siblings of eight and my uh, parents were teachers at that time and uh, it was not easy from the time I started to comprehend my life was full of struggle because of a lot of challenges especially financial matters and uh, I just pursued I just uh, dream uh, big we are in the community where war is happening. We witness the uh, conflict between the government and the revolutionary groups. Way back in 2000, up to 2001, that was the time of the all-out war in Mindanao during the time of the former president Estrada. The war between the Imailef and the government, we used to see the planes bombings also. You know, this bombing is not new for us, it's common for us. When we see the plane bombing, oh, oh they have the war, they have conflict again. During the all-out war, all of those uh, people in the municipalities of Lana del Sur evacuated in the city. At that time, our relatives from these two municipalities, my mother's side and my father's side, evacuated in the city with us. I saw how difficult uh, war is. The effect of war, you will see evacuees coming to the city, bringing their stuff. Difficulty of uh, having food, water, uh, the basic needs. 
So I witnessed that one. It's very difficult. How do you sustain this one? And after they stop and uh, go to negotiation, but the effects remain. Sometimes people could hardly go back to the original state of their lives because of the impact of war. Until now, you could see people who remain in the city. They abandon their, their places because, of course, they have nothing to go back. My thought was, somebody must stop this one, must stop the war. These two groups must settle down, must sit down and start talking. We should really come up with a constructive solution on how to stop war and work together and uh, coexist peacefully. The Bangsamoro Organic Law is a law amending the Republic Act 1954. That is the law governing the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao. It is a law that will provide wider, bigger, and better autonomous region for Muslim uh, Mindanao. Government officials have been saying that the ARMM is a failed experiment. So if there is a failed experiment, you need to remedy. You need to find a solution to solve the problem, to address the failure. The difference between the BOL and the Republic Act 1954 is the coverage. BOL is, is an enhanced version of the Republic Act 1954, meaning that there are many, many provisions in the BOL plus the political and the geographical and the monetary component of the law, they are much, much bigger than what is in the Republic Act 1954. At any rate, or this will address the long overdue sentiments of the Muslims in this country. It may not be fully solved, but at the major extent, it will be resolved. Now, I think this Bangsamoro Organic Law is the solution for that failed experiment. It is a solution at a major extent. Why? Because it addresses some fundamental questions. For example, on the question of legislation, the implementation of Sharia. Now, the implementation of Sharia Islamia under the Bangsamoro Organic Law has been widened. It will now address the question of some people, some Muslims, on the limited implementation of Sharia law in the Philippines. In the aspect of economics, it's a very significant step in the full-pledged implementation of Islamic banking and finance, meaning that it helps further in developing the uh, economic aspect of the Muslim communities, or it encourages the inflows of Muslim investors with Sharia-compliant investments. So when that happens, then it will develop, it will strengthen, empower the Philippine economy. In other words, this law will not only benefit the Muslims in this country or the Bangsamoro people, but it will benefit the whole nation, the Philippine economy. Isn't it good? Of course, it's very commendable. So that's why I'm saying that no person in this country who aspires for lasting peace in Mindanao and uplift the status of the Muslims and the Philippine economy will hinder the full realization or full implementation of the Bangsamoro Organic Law. If these people will understand the content of the BOL, unless they have their own political interest or selfish interest. Because if you look at the law, it's very hopeful. It will uplift the status of the Muslims in the Philippines and will give a good political structure, given the distribution of seats in the uh, Bangsamoro Parliament. This will create change to not only Muslim communities, but in Mindanao. Kung sino man ang ma-appoint as members of the parliament, the initial one, will deliver. Because we cannot afford to repeat the same mistakes as experienced in the dark past of the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao. The BOL will advocate peace because much, much of the components of the society that were not satisfied under the Republic Act 1954 are in the BOL. The biggest revolutionary group remaining in Mindanao is the Moro Islamic Liberation Front. They have the capability to wage war. And when you have this kind of organization, you need to address their sentiments, what they want. And take note that the MILF will be given at least three years to run the Bangsamoro Transitional Authority. Now, this Bangsamoro Transition Authority will be running the BARM okay, for three years until 2022. At this time, it will give the MILF, being the largest existing revolutionary group in the Philippines, to show their capability to run a government. I would say when you make the biggest you know, agree with you to implement a certain law, then I think the smaller ones will be easier to 
neutralize. Especially when this biggest organization agreed to help in avoiding other revolutionary groups to emerge. I just want to see a lasting peace for Muslim Mindanao because we were in war for decades. My dream for my people, for the Bangsamoro people, is to see finally under the BOL a progressive society, progressive government that will attend the needs of the people, that will uplift the economic and social status of the Bangsamoro people and the whole Mindanaoans and the nation. If not the BOL, then what law are we? hoping for, to uplift the status of the Muslims. You know, passing a law will take decades. It's a high time to patronize the Bangsamor Organic Law, and maybe we can help, we can suggest on how to betterly implement the law, okay, once it is finally approved and uh, uh, implemented.